Good morning. This morning we're going to talk about Chapter 10, which covers liabilities. This includes all current liabilities, any sort of installment notes, and any contingencies that you have. And we'll talk about that later on in the chapter. So I just want you to re reiterate what current liabilities are. Current liabilities are any debt that's going to be paid in less than one year. So a current liability would be payroll. A current liability would be paying your suppliers that you owe money to. A long-term liability is beyond one year. An excellent example of a long-term liability would be a mortgage payable because it's for 30 years. So just to remember who's who here, if a company lends you money, they're basically uh, doing a loan, they're considered the creditor or the lender. You as the company borrowing are, is considered the borrower or the debtor. So just so you understand the terms, the creditor is someone who lends money, the debtor is somebody who borrows the money. This chapter will be very similar to chapter eight, which had to do with receivables, people I owe money to. It's almost exactly like that, but just a little bit different. So in this chapter, we're gonna talk about accounts payable. Accounts payable are when you owe a supplier money. And we're also going to talk about accrued liabilities, okay? That's the ability, the obligation to pay current assets in the future. So we're going to talk a little bit about this first. We're going to start with accounts payable. And we're going to start with something called short-term notes payable. If you remember from Chapter 8, we had Chapter 8, we had notes receivable. In this situation, you will be owing somebody else money, a supplier that you probably bought material for on account and you have to pay them and so what happens is when you cannot pay them in 30 days you're going to have to sign a note to them to pay them over a period of time with interest so here's my first example i owe um, i issue a note a 90-day note 12 percent for a thousand dollars dated august 1st so i'm nature sunshine company I owe Murray Company $1,000, but I cannot pay them. So remember, we have to go back to our formula. So this is the journal entry to start the note. I'm debiting accounts payable and putting it credit to notes payable. So when I sign a note, I actually take it out of the accounts payable. And when I start a note, I create it in notes payable. The two most important things you need to know on short-term notes payable will be how to calculate the due date and how to calculate the interest. We've had that in chapter eight. So when I'm ready to pay them, uh, first of all, when I'm ready to pay them, we're gonna calculate 90 days from August 1st, and we're gonna calculate the interest on $1,000 at 12% for 90 days. And here's the journal entry when I pay them. So we see from my formula principal, times interest times 90 days divided by 360 is $30. So I owe them $30. October 30th would be the due date. Here's my journal entry. So on the due date, the notes payable is no longer valid. So there's the $1,000 that I'm debiting to clear off the notes payable. The $30 interest is an expense. When we were doing chapter eight, the interest was revenue because I was getting it. Now I am paying it. And I'm gonna spend $1,030 to pay for the cash. So this is basically me giving them cash. So I'm gonna show you on the next slide kind of what happens on both sides of the books, both the creditor and the debtor. This was very similar to chapter eight, but well, let's take a look at this. So down here, this side is the borrower. So the borrower, this is me borrowing, uh, purchasing something from them. This would be the creditor. This would be an example of chapter eight journal entries. This would be an example of chapter 10. So Bowdoin Company purchases merchandise on account from Coker Company, $10,000, 2% 10 net 30. Oh, let me get my little clicker here. 2% 10 net 30. And the cost of the merchandise is $7,500. So as the buyer, this is what I put on my books from Chapter 10. 
I'm getting inventory. I owe them $10,000. If I was the seller, which would be chapter eight, here's journal entry number one to recognize the sale. Journal entry number two to reduce the inventory. Remember, this is chapter eight journal entries. On May 31st, I realized I cannot pay them and I offered to sign a 60 day 12% note for 10,000. So here is my book. So it, so here I'm crediting accounts payable because I'm increasing it. Now I'm going to debit because I'm going to decrease it because I have to remove it from accounts payable. And then I'm going to credit notes payable. So I'm actually creating a notes payable 60 day note 12%. If the seller, here's what it would look on my books. It would be a receivable. And finally, on July 30th, I pay them. So the first things you need to do whenever a note is signed like this is calculate the due date and calculate the interest. So here's my interest calculation, 10,000 times 12% times 60 days divided by 360 will be $200. So I'm going to give them $10,200. Of that, 200 is interest expense, and then I debit notes payable. So I wipe off notes payable. Over here from chapter eight, this is what it would look like. It's interest revenue to them, but it's interest expense to me. So this is an example of notes payable when you cannot pay your accounts payable. Next, we're gonna look at a different type of notes payable. It's gonna be when I borrow money from the bank. And there's going to be two scenarios here we're going to talk about. So you might go in, um, and, and every good business should have a, an account set up with the bank where they can actually borrow money for short term for whatever they need to. So here's an example of a short term notes payable when I'm borrowing cash from the bank. I borrow on September 19th, $4,000, 90 day note, 15% interest. So I walk into the bank, I ask to borrow $4,000, I tell them I want to pay them 90 days, and they tell me my interest rate is 15%, which it is kind of high. So just so you know. So here's my journal entry to get the money. I walk out the door with $4,000, and I created a notes payable for that amount of money. So I owe them money. So the first things you need to do is calculate the due date. If I, I'll let you do that now. So September 19th was the date I signed it, and I want to find what day is day number 90. I'll stop while you do that. Pause your actual video. Also, while you're doing that, find the interest amount, 4,000 times 15% times 90 divided by 360. Pause your video. On the due date, which you should have gotten December 18th, I owe them $4,000 plus the interest of $150. So here's my journal entry. Notes payable will be debited for $4,000 because on the due date, the payable note is no longer valid. It cost me $150 to buy this. And I end up sending $4,150 to them. So I want to back up. I want to talk about something. When I went to the bank here and I borrowed the $4,000, I walked out the door with $4,000. This is called the proceeds. What you walk out the door with is called the proceeds. Right here, it says the cash proceeds. I just want to make sure I bring that to your attention. Okay, here's when I pay them. So this is one type of note from borrowing from a bank. But there's the second type of note called discounted note. A discounted note might be issued instead. So what happens on a discounted note is the interest rate is called the discount rate. And here's what happens. So I walk into the bank on August 10th and I borrow $20,000. It's a 90 day discounted note. Very important. Pay attention to this word. The discount rate is 15%. So here's what happens. They take, they take the principal amount times 15% times 90 days divided by 360 and find out that the interest would be $750. And 
they subtract that from the 20,000. So I actually walk out the door with $19,250. I've already incurred the interest expense of $750. I incur the interest expense the day I borrow the money, not the day I pay it back. That is the key is why people do this. And I owe them $20,000. So remember, a discounted note, the interest is subtracted from the principal up front, and your proceeds are $19,250. Now you think to yourself, why would somebody pay interest first? Well, the timing. Interest expense. Hold on one second, guys. Sorry about that for the interruption. So as I was saying, why would someone incur the $750 up front? It's about the timing of when I get the expense. So I'm actually incurring the expense at the beginning of the loan and not at the end. The more expenses I have, the less net income I have, the less taxes I pay. Remember that. More expenses, less income, less taxes. So here's what happens when I pay back my short-term notes payable. So I said, give them $20,000 cash and I now debit or close out my notes payable. So this kind of concludes uh, what we call short-term notes payable, but I want to talk about one more component before I move to payroll because payroll is a large topic. So you understand that long-term debt is when you owe money for more than a year. But a long-term debt would include something called current portion of long-term debt. So for example, I go out and buy a building and I'm gonna make payments for 30 years. I'm gonna make payments every single month for 30 years. However, the first 12 payments I'm gonna make for the next 12 months would actually be considered the current portion of long-term debt. And so you're gonna see this, I believe you're gonna see this when you're doing project three. The current portion of the long-term debt would be a current liability. So it would be those 12 months of payments. If I bought if I bought a piece of a building today and I started making payments May 1st, every month I make a thousand dollar payment, well, I would have twelve thousand dollars in the current portion of the long-term debt. That would be reflecting payments that would be due starting May 1st this year to April 30th next year. That's all less than one year. So I just wanna bring this to your attention. You will see it on project number three when you're doing that. Other than that, you're probably not gonna to see too much of it. This concludes the current liabilities uh, that we're gonna talk about and my next video will be about payroll.